Hello, and thanks for joining us on this LinkedIn Live session today. I'm Adam Schaefer, and I'm the president of Phelps United. And Nikolai? Yeah, Nikolai Tomman here, vice president of e-commerce over at Phelps United as well. And, you know, Nikolai talk every day, and we always thought it would be cool if people listen to us go back and forth about some of the stuff that we're hearing and we're seeing and we're experiencing on Amazon because the things on Amazon change daily and so much of it is not necessarily advertised by Amazon. You got to kind of figure it out or you find somebody at Amazon that gives you some information and you stitch it together and you talk to the community and you finally figure it out. So one reason to talk and work with people like us is like we live and die in the Amazon ecosystem daily. So. You know, a couple of things that we've been talking about lately that we think are pretty relevant, pretty cool, um, you know, and, and it's no particular order, but just like a, a cool, some random stuff that we've been talking about is what we've been seeing our, our brand partners going through with Amazon on their annual negotiations, which is called AVN negotiations. And, you know, Nikolai, you know, you've been, you've been telling me a lot of the stuff that you've been seeing and hearing you know what what's the latest on this because i heard it's been absolutely brutal like this is the year of profit for amazon not growth yeah so avn as adam was saying is the amazon vendor negotiations and this is something they do annually with all 1p partners and there's a lot of pros and cons to it generally in the last couple of years it's been pretty peaceful amazon always works on squeezing margin out of their vendors um one way or another and normally there's a middle ground that they find and they they move forward from there however this year with a lot of our partners we're experiencing um very radical changes in the way they approach avn they we've been hearing seeing and experiencing anything from uh some of our vendors getting clawbacks to grant amazon incremental margin we're seeing them push for um incredibly high ppms which is essentially Amazon's uh, end profit. And then additionally, one of the biggest things that is happening is Amazon is rotating their uh, vendors that work with the brands. And for a lot of the brands that we work with, we're seeing very green new members hit the board, whether that's good or bad. It's kind of a dependent on the well, brand. Well, I think, I think what happens is like the brand gets used to working with a, a vendor manager at Amazon and then they're gone and now they're dealing with somebody new and that new person is really following the book. There's really not much room for negotiation because they're following it by the letter of the law that they've been given and they're trying to do their job and um, and their job is to get as much incremental margin from the brands as humanly possible. So that's not a bad thing. I mean, the, the biggest big box stores in the world have done this for years, but traditionally Amazon's been growing like a weed. And as their overall growth has slowed down, now still by far the biggest marketplace in, uh, in the US. And I mean, it's just a monster. So we love them for their size. We love them for the marketplace, but, you know this growth curve of you know huge exponential growth is slowed and so now they're trying to figure out how do we make more margin and how else do you make more margin they pay less for the product and they get more you know marketing dollars and other dollars from their vendor partners yeah i mean that, that's a great point one of the three buckets is generally going to be impacted for each of these vendors whether it's uh, marketing freight or a lot of damage allowance depending on the category and Amazon's gunning for one of them, and they're, they're squeezing most of their partners. Um, but you made a great point. A lot of it is relationship building with the 1P uh, vendor manager on the account. And a lot of these clients have built years and years and years of relationships with one or two individuals, uh, and then they get rotated for somebody brand new. And it's creating a very tough environment for a lot of the brands negotiate what their terms are going to be. And, you know, I, I think the brands are struggling in general with profitability. So we would always talk to brands and figure out how do we help them so they don't need to um, go backwards in their GP or gross profit. And, and so, you know, that's one of our goals is to figure out how to help them m maintain or 
earn better margin, but it's a tough grind and these negotiations could go on for a while. And while they're going on, things can happen where maybe Amazon's not ordering as much of the stuff as they used to order, uh, or maybe they're holding back on certain payments. You know, a lot of these are rumors, so I don't know, you know, I'm not going to say for a fact that they do. And again, you know, we all love Amazon for what they've built, but I do think if you have to deal with them as a, as a brand, it's, um, it's tough going because Amazon has a margin profile they need to make and you need to fit in that box. Now, if you're one of the largest brands, I'm sure they go through this too, but they have a lot more power. So we're seeing this happen with, you know, brands that maybe do 50, 50 million, 60 million and below um, and selling direct. And, and it could be different by category. And, you know, we, we work with about 15 different categories right now with brands on Amazon. So we hear different stories and we try to piece this all together to get better intel. But our intel tells us this is a tough year for avian negotiations. And you just need to try your best to stick to your guns. Um, you know, we would we would love it for you to work with companies like us. And, you know, we're you know, 3P partner agencies where we buy and sell the product and sell it for you on Amazon. And, and, and it, basically become your your partner um, you know, on Amazon. And it, it's a lot easier way of working with uh, the, the Amazon ecosystem. But I do think that many want to sell to Amazon and they're looking to figure out how do they do a better job of negotiation. And sometimes it's maybe you can't sell them your full line anymore. Maybe you need to go hybrid and go partial 3P and partial 1P and see really if, if it balances out better for you. But I definitely, you know, you know, personally, I love for more of it to come from 1P to 3P players like us. But, you know, it, it's I don't think it's going to ever be like that. I, I mean, I don't know what you think, Nikolai. Uh, yeah, I mean, you made a few really good points. Um, taking a step back, they're really putting vendors in a box right now, which is either you accept their terms or um, we're seeing some radical actions being taken where we're seeing buy boxes suppressed. Uh, a lot of the post isn't, or a lot of the stock isn't posting. And I think it's only imperative for brands to at least consider an approach of a hybrid model if they're exclusive with 1P. And over the decades, we've seen Amazon really um, squeeze the bottom line of vendors that are selling direct to Amazon, where the lowest revenue brands are slowly getting cut. And if you don't have a backup in place, it's you're going to be in a world of hurt, given it another two to three years. I can't believe you just said the thing I hate the most, and that is the um, the buy box suppression. I, I mean, I still, I, I don't understand why they, they do it. I mean, I, I think the theory is if you could buy it cheaper elsewhere, we're not going to show the price because we don't want to show a higher price. But at the end of the day, Amazon makes money from whether it's a three-piece seller or a one piece seller. So I don't know who are they torturing more themselves or the sellers because of the brands, because um, all they're doing is, is uh, slowing the sales down on this product. So that one just, you know, always blows me away when I see that. I, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, what do you see? I mean, I see more buy box suppressions than ever. Yeah, we see it happen all the time. And it's always the same response from Amazon where they're always after the lowest price. They want to be pricing leaders in the in the channels. And if somebody's out there marketing it lower, they're either going to suppress or they're going to drop their own price if it is 1P, and which can impact clawbacks, um, back-end rebates, or any other type of incentive for Amazon, depending on what's in the contract. And, and one kind of common thing I see, Nikolai, all the time is that a, a brand needs to, for lots of reasons, the, the cost of their their, their cost of their components have gone up or the parts that they use to build their products and they want to increase their minimum selling price or their list price and almost always it is very difficult for a brand to get that new higher price passed through to amazon and that's where i see brands really struggling because if they give a better price to amazon than to the rest in the channel or or their their reseller network they're going to create absolute channel conflict. So um, I, I see many, many brands right now struggling with, we need to increase our price. Our cost of components have gone up and Amazon won't increase our price. 
what are we going to do? And we've seen brands just stop selling those those ASINs to Amazon. They just won't do it. They'll take a hit in sales because they just can't disrupt their overall channel. Plus, they also don't want to lose, you know, the money on it. And some of them will lose money on it. Yeah, and it's also a double-edged sword because if you have the margin to spare and you accept the increased cost that Amazon is proposing, uh, you, you're never going to be able to bring it back down. So what's good now may not be good in the long term. So so we're not whining, and I'm not trying to whine about AVN. It's something that happens every year, but we definitely wanted to talk more about that it's not a walk in the park this year for any brand. I mean, I say that. I, I definitely talked to a couple of brands where, no, we, we have the same vendor manager. We've been with them forever. They're great. And everything is is peachy great. I, I, you know, that's, I think, one in 100. But the most part, um, they're going through a tough time right now, renegotiating their annual terms with Amazon. And again, they need Amazon as part of their mix because it's so big. And they rely on Amazon sales, their reach. Um, it's important for commercial and consumer products. So people need it, but they they just can't afford it sometimes. And that's why we try to help them. But, you know, words of wisdom is stick, try to stick to your guns the best you can on your AVN negotiations. Um, and maybe and have a fallback, plan, plan for a plan B. And, and that's absolutely it. It's like, you gotta have that plan B because what'll happen is Amazon might just focus on the, the ASINs that they make money on and the balance of the line, they're not gonna sell or they're not gonna stock them as consistently. So you need to make sure you have a plan B. And, and, and I think it's really hard for brands to have to go try and develop their own three piece store um, because it, it's so complicated. You're gonna add infrastructure costs. I don't think you're gonna, the cost that you add to your business isn't gonna, um, it isn't going to uh, um, help you make more money on the products because you're going to wind up sinking in into cost managing and then trying to figure out and learn and navigate Amazon is quite difficult. So, you know, working with companies like ours, not to make this such a, a promo, but whether it's us or other trusted partners, you need a partner in this to rely on. So, you know, I think we talked about AVN. If you're a brand and you're going through AVN and you want to talk about it and feel better about it i mean we can tell you some great war stories without giving you the the actual names of the brands but we're here for you to to talk about and, and nikolai and i talk to the brands every day about you know brands going through their avn negotiations and how they deal with it so i don't know unless there's anything else on that i mean uh talk that one out a bit nikolai any further I, comments i think we hit it right on the head okay love avn but Another really cool thing, so we talked about a little pain with AVN, but another really, really cool thing is that if you are a brand in, in the U.S. and you're selling your products on Amazon in the U.S., depending on the, the size of the product and depending on the, the reviews, and there's a whole mixture, and Nikolai probably knows it a lot better than I do, but you, you, can, you can sell your products in Canada and Mexico, and there are, from what we hear, potentially some new markets that are going to come on. It's called the NARF program. And, and Nicola, you know a lot more about the NARF program than I do, but I mean, I, I think it's awesome. Yeah, so NARF is an incredible program. Um, it started about five years ago as a beta, and it still currently sits in this beta grouping within Amazon, but it's available for nearly all 3P sellers. And as you mentioned, it's called NARF, which stands for North American Remote Fulfillment. And essentially what it allows you to do is your stock at FBA is now going to be posted into Canada and Mexico. And Amazon auto converts the, the selling price that you have in the US to uh, Canadian dollars and pesos. And that way on a daily basis, it's keeping up with the currency exchange rate. So you're never gonna be losing margin, at least on a daily basis. And you can create parameters within the program um, to offset returns, offset um, any type of unexpected exchange fees with increased percentages that you want to post to those countries. So if a product is sitting in the U.S. for $100, you can list it to Canadian dollars and then mark it up incremental 5% to offset and protect yourself when selling in these foreign countries. And uh, we've been using it for quite a few years now. It's um, tried and true. 
and we see incredible incremental sales come through those channels and Amazon does the currency exchange rate for you. So it's what, built what's cool, platform. cool though for us um, and, and, and for anybody that tries it, you know, do you really want to start putting inventory up in Canada or, or in Mexico? And, and by the way, they don't just convert the, the pricing. They uh, in, in Mexico, they're converting the language. So it's it's all local language. So it's pretty cool. Um, so, you don't. it's really like plug and play. Your products are now available in Mexico, believe it or not, and people are buying. And um, you, you don't have to do anything but stock it in um, your normal FBA warehouses in the U.S. And Amazon does the heavy lifting. But when you find a winner, so like say you put a couple of hundred uh, ASINs on Canada and Mexico, and you find something that's moving quite well, that's a great sign where maybe it is worth it for you to want to stock that product locally. And so now call it, you know, you've done your, your testing and you find a couple of winners and you stock those there because once you stock the product at FBA local Canada or Mexico, you'll probably sell 50% more. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making that up, Nikolai. I don't know if that's the, the right number, but it definitely will increase your sales being there because it does take a bit longer for the products to get to the end user when they buy it through the uh, NORF program. Right, and using very rough math, we typically see a 10 to 15% sell through in Canada based off of the US volume that you're doing. Mexico is a little lighter between five and 7%. And that's through the NARF program. Once you start stocking the inventory in Canada or Mexico, you should see your sell through increase more than fourfold because consumers are no longer paying for the freight which is one of the caveats to the NARF program is your customers are paying for tariffs and freight into the countries and reducing all of these points of friction is going to create a lot more incentive for customers to be purchasing your product that's landed in Canada or Mexico. And incrementally, you can upcharge the product if, uh, if margin is what you're after because they are no longer incurring this freight cost, which you can now associate to the product cost. And what's great is there's always an 80-20 with products. And so here we find our 80-20 and, you know, you know, 80% of the sales come from 20% of the ASINs. And we put the winners up in FBA, Canada, FBA, Mexico, and you're taking a lot less risk and you get to get much more velocity. So, you know, I, I'm a believer in the program. I think Amazon's done a great job to make it easy for sellers to leverage these programs. Um, but, but I do think the heavier the product, the, the more difficult it is to get it enrolled. Or is that not true? Yeah, so they, no, you're right. They do have a few parameters for what qualifies and what does not. Um, so depending on the weight of the product, as well as the size of, or dims of the product, they're either going to be auto enrolled or auto rejected. So you have to analyze your catalog, figure out what complies to your to the NARF program, and you can basically flip everything on with the light switch. So, like we said, Canada is like should be could be ten to fifteen percent of what your U.S. sales are um, in most cases, and and Mexico is it's actually a bigger market, but there's less disposable income. So you know, call it six percent of your U.S. sales or something like that, um, but. And, and in many of these markets, there's less competition. The competitors are still there, don't get me wrong, but um, there, there's usually less overall sellers. So you do have a little bit more breathing room. But now, I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about it, but wasn't there some rumor that they were expanding? It's, it's definitely a rumor right now, but it's more or less confirmed. Uh, so what we've heard is either at the end of June or July, the NARF program is also going to be flipped into Brazil. And Brazil is now going to be one of the eligible countries auto enrolled. And then by end of Q4, what the initiative is by Amazon is to create this program to now incorporate Argentina. So what's happening is we're seeing Amazon test the program in Mexico and Canada. And now that they've seen the success, they're figuring out what countries they can get into and use this program to allocate inventory posting to those countries. So between Brazil and Argentina, we're gonna see um, incremental 40% lift through the program. And that's just right off the bat. A lot of the customers, it's, Amazon's gonna be a new platform for them. And once it's kind of indoctrinated as a, a feasible and 
easy to use program and website, we should start seeing a lot of orders start trickling through. It's interesting how they picked Argentina. I mean, Brazil is big. I didn't know much, but maybe because Lionel Messi is now coming to Miami. Um, you know, they decided that they wanted to be good to Argentina, but I imagine it's a sizable market if Amazon's chasing it. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, so, so I think, you know, the big picture here is if you want to expand your marketplace, you've been doing the US for a while, you have products at FBA and you want to break into some international markets, you know, with Amazon's help, you could be in Canada and Mexico and hopefully Brazil and Argentina in short order, but you could be in Canada and Mexico tomorrow. So if you're not doing it, it, it you know, even if you decide you don't want to put product there, go for the incremental. Um, it, it's it's really pretty easy to do. Of all the things on Amazon, I would say that's one you should flip on uh, without putting too much thought into it. Um, you know, that's my, my opinion. And I think, you know, Nikolai feels the same way. We want to do this with everybody we work with. Yeah, there, as there's as as very as little to no risk, and Amazon covers the return fees to get the country out of the uh, to get the product out of the country and back into the U.S. So you're not going to be experiencing much, if at all, any type of incurred cost to sell there. And to your point, with uh, Brazil getting flipped in the next 30 to 60 days, it's imperative for most sellers to get comfortable with the program and start listing at least in Canada and Mexico to work out any type of uh, possible issues that they may face. Cool. Well, you know, changing the topic again, not to give you guys like this um, roller coaster ride here. So, you know, we talked about this tough AVN and we talk about a little bit of the NARF program, but the one thing that drives me nuts with Amazon, and I love them, but when you ship products to FBA and you think it's going to be, oh, a week or two weeks, and it could take, four weeks or six weeks or 10 weeks before your products are there and available. So like you've paid for these products, uh, you, you own them and you're waiting forever to get them in a sellable location for you to sell them. And then this has to be, has to be a common issue with every seller, um, uh, you know, that, that is in the game, but what's the worst time for this? And that is like holidays or prime day. And what's new this year, from what I understand, is that for Prime Day, they're, they're, they, they kind of have like this expedited freight program that you could get your products received faster in the queue than the standard, the standard seller. And so I think this means paying more, Nikolai. What does it actually mean? Yeah, so the, the, we only saw this start popping up uh, at the end of last week. And what's happening is once you finish through your FBA shipment, and you select the date for the pickup and you go to pay for the pickup uh, they're now offering sellers a way to expedite their inventory to get received quicker into the fba fulfillment centers and this is uh we've heard of them doing this once before uh but they didn't give an announcement they didn't make it public it just flipped like a light switch and now it's showing up in all sellers seller centrals um, the only thing we did start noticing is it doesn't qualify for LTL shipments. So it's only for case pack shipments going up or small. Um, that, that's a shipments. bummer because that's where I see a lot of the time is on the LTL. Um, yeah, the LTL is always one to take longer than a um, small parcel. And honestly, it would be much better for a lot of these bigger brands to be able to get their trucks received sooner uh, where we see a, uh, they should do it for that. That would make me happy. But, yeah, it wouldn't be bad, especially when we see two times as long to receive the LTL shipments. Yeah, I mean, that that um, makes me cry. But with this, I mean, I, I don't think we've done it before. So you, you have any idea what the cost and how many how many days of um, of, of um, increase do you get? So they're, they're not stating how long it'll get received in. They're more so saying that you have security knowing your products can be landed before prime day uh, so there's they're not expediting the window it's just giving you the assurance that your inventory is going to be landed and sellable in time for prime week uh however on the flip side it's all based off dims and weight so it really varies package to package doesn't look like quantity is affecting the time to get received it's really a matter of upcharge based off of uh, the DIMMs. 
Do you have any idea what, what the upcharge is? I, I don't even know if we know. We've seen order uh, shipments that without the program will cost $40 to get received. And then with the program, it is probably a, a 60% lift in cost. And that $40 is now 65 to $70. So okay. if you have a lot of quantity, it's not horrible. Uh, but if you're sending up three units of something that's mm -hmm. high ASP. Yeah, I mean, so something with a lot of units um, and big case packs, I don't think that's so bad. I mean, but it's just, it's a bummer. It's another way for them to make a couple of extra bucks. And, and the flip side, not, e not even just them making more money. What's happening is if they're receiving your product, it's pulling inventory that's being shipped up from other vendors. And now their product's going longer. Yeah, in the queue. yeah no, so you're going to go even, longer. Even if they planned ahead and they planned accordingly. So, so uh, almost, almost I, I don't want to say the word extortion, but it's almost like if you <laughs> don't, if you don't do this, are you going to be waiting longer? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. So I, I don't know. Do you pay the VIG or you don't pay the VIG? I don't, I don't know. You know, I think the thing is try to get your stuff up to Amazon early and not have to deal with this. And, 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 you know, we've been for the last month or so, you know, doing everything in our power to get products up to Amazon. Uh, so we're locked and loaded for Prime Day and we'll do it again for, um, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But if you're running late uh, and that happens with, I'd say, 70 percent of the sellers, this might not be a bad thing to look into if you can afford it, because what you don't want to do is be out of stock. I mean, that to me would be a tragedy. Um, you know, one of the, the biggest um, issues you can have is prime day happens and your products are not available. So, yeah, and we didn't see that much last year. Last year was a pretty successful prime day for most sellers. Uh, but the year prior, back in 2021, it was a madhouse trying to get inventory to FBA. And what happened was Amazon had their worst prime day or prime week uh, historically. And it's because nobody could get their inventory received. And a lot of people were having freight issues and uh, issues getting inventory from overseas into the States. And everything was a, a madhouse trying to just get organized and get their product available. Um, however, obviously there's a, a huge benefit to being able to drop ship through your facility. And that saved us as well as a lot of other uh, 3Ps that have those capabilities. So never be out of stock. Um, again, if you're selling to Amazon, it's up to them and the Amazon gods to get your products there on time. And sometimes they have delays too. If you're working with a 3P um, partner, make sure that you're, you know, you're way ahead of schedule. And if you're sitting here um, in June, and you know this, this will make this um, uh, this uh, LinkedIn event a little dated. But if you're sitting here beginning of June. And um, Prime Day is sometime in July. You, you kind of there. You're at the deadline, man. Like you got to get something going, and this this program might actually help ensure that you're in stock. So I, I don't know. I'd go, I'd go fifty fifty. Like if you're going to sh start shipping stuff next week, maybe I would do it. If you're if you're shipping today, maybe I wouldn't. And I think you would yeah. talk it over. I don't know. Yeah. One other option that a lot of three P's have, um, although it's not the most efficient, is you can start creating multiple FBA tickets for the same SKU. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna divvy up the inventory to go to different locations. And now what you're allowing yourself is to do a spread of your inventory across the states and some are gonna get received in time. And hopefully by doing so, you're not gonna miss the window. Yep, so again, don't be out of stock. It'll, it'll hurt your um, sales for sure, because if you don't have it, you can't sell it. Even if Amazon shows that it's coming in at a future date, at least it makes it sellable, but it puts the date out when people are gonna receive it, and that turns a lot of people off. So I definitely see it work a little bit, but it's not anywhere near as good as being in stock. And um, get, get moving early. The problem with moving early sometimes is you're going to have your inventory tied up for a little bit of time, but it's better than being out of stock. Do not be out of stock. Your rankings will suffer. Um, if you invested a lot of money in advertising to grow your business, um, you know, you built it for a reason and now it's going to go the other way. So be in stock and um, take a look at this new program and see if it makes sense for you guys. I Again, it depends on the product, the size of the product and um you know how much inventory you can you're allowed to keep up at amazon and flow up to amazon so um, a bunch of factors you could talk to people like us to try and help figure that out with you and come up with a good solution um so 
you, you know, even if you have the product in stock, if it's a new product or it's a product that doesn't have many reviews, you're going to suffer because you're not going to be able to get the conversion rates you need and you're not going to be showing up in the search results as often. You got to get reviews. And it is one of the most difficult things to get reviews for your products. And I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I, there's, there's still the folks that do the, the gray hat and the black hat methods of doing it, which is no good because ultimately you're going to get caught and you're going to get thrown off of Amazon. And we try to live, a, a, you know, life is too short to play games. But the, the legitimate ways of doing it on Amazon, um, sometimes watching, it's like watching grass grow. Um, it's not so fast, but you do need to try to do everything in your power to get positive reviews on your products. If you wind up having no reviews or one and a half or two and a half stars, and there's a product that's got more stars um, and, and you know great reviews, you're going to wind up losing. And so, you know, Amazon tries to help uh, by creating programs that will allow you to work with influencers um, to to get reviews. And it's called the Vine program. And Nicola, you've done this a bunch of times. So give us a good, bad and ugly because I definitely know the good, but I, you know, I, I don't know some of the, you know, the, the, the bad aspects. Yeah. So we, we've been around for a while. So we've seen the Vine program evolve over the last couple of years. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is Vine essentially grew through uh, a 1P channel, through Vendor Central. And customers paid $5,000 for a Vine credit to enroll their product into the program. Since then, it's migrated over to Seller Central for 3P sellers, and the reduction in cost is um, significant. So no longer do you have to buy the credits for uh, $5,000, now, essentially, all it is is a free program. You get up to 200 enrollment. And for each enrollment, the cost is the goods of the product that you're giving away. Vine program is essential for product launches. It's essential for brands to create reputation. Um, there's a lot of good, but starting with the bad is you yeah. need to ensure that your product is phenomenal. Uh, these are honest feedbacks that come through the top of the top product reviewers on Amazon. And they're receiving this product for free in order to really scrutinize your product. And they're gonna find flaws with it. And what you need to be sure is um, your product is either accurately represented on the platform. You're not overstating what the capabilities are of what's enrolled. And what you show is what they're gonna receive. And taking a step back, each of the enrollments you are having the opportunity to give out up to 30 units. And not all of the units that are set to end users are gonna get reviews. We've seen on average about um, 80 to 85% of all claimed product end up receiving the review through the Vine reviewers. And we've seen it across the board. Some of our the brands that we've seen um, use the program and if customers aren't thrilled with what they got, they'll let you know. Uh, but I think I truly believe the good in it is you're going to be taking a listing from zero reviews and you can jumpstart it to get up to 30 honest reviews, which are more coveted in the eyes of Amazon as well as Amazon shoppers. And this is going to impact your marketing. It's going to impact your um, product listing rankings. You're going to get a lot more legitimacy to a brand by having stronger reviews on your product listings. Um, and all of it together is really enhancing and giving you the opportunity to succeed quickly. Now, now I've seen a brand that's done a couple of different products at the same time. And one, it worked out great. They got fives and it, they got really good reviews. Then on one of their products, they got a one star. And um, that was devastating for them. And so they felt like we, we did this Vine program and look what happened. And I think the, the answer is, look, um, the, the, these people are leaving that are getting this. They're leaving what they feel is, is an honest review. You know, they're not looking at like, did the UPS guy deliver it and didn't drop it in the mud? They're, they're looking at the product itself, at the packaging, at the, at the, the instructions. Is it easy to use? Uh, does it do what you promised it would use in the copy? And, you know, if it fulfills all of these things, they're going to give you a good review. But if it's, you know, a lot of sizzling marketing and the product doesn't pull through, you're going to pay. So 
don't do this Vine program if your product isn't up to snuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know why you would want to market it if it's, if it's not, but it, it, it's got to be what you're describing. So do that. But, but so, so you, you mentioned you get 30, right? So, but how does it work? Like, what do you actually do? Because you've mechanically done this thing. I just talk about it. Yeah, so, so there's a few different tactics you can use with the Vine program. Um, but to answer your question first, what has to be done is your inventory has to be at fulfillment centers at Amazon. This isn't a program. You okay, can so it's got to be at FBA. Okay, got correct. It. And then from there, you enroll either a specific ASIN or a parent listing, where customers can now choose from the parent listing. If it's apparel, you get to pick the color and the size. Um, or if it's technology product, as an example, you are selecting this specific ASIN that is going to be enrolled for end users to receive. And from there, you initiate the program and Amazon now locks up 30 of those units in order for Vine customers to be able to pull for stock from. Uh, from there, uh, on standard, uh, I mean, although Prime is no longer necessarily two days anymore, they'll receive the product within two to five business days. And from there, you can start to expect to see reviews uh, given another week from there because a lot of the product is normally tested. And like you and I were mentioning, they are there to scrutinize. So they're going to test it. They're going to make sure that it's uh, up to snuff, as you mentioned. And from there, they'll start leaving reviews. So effectively, within two weeks, you'll start seeing product reviews pop up on your listing. And these reviews are going to have a little fine voice badge on the reviews. And most of the reviews come with pictures, videos, really what you want as a product review and although you'll start seeing the first reviews take maybe two weeks to get the first to trickle in you should start to see the last reviews come in anywhere from a month to two months after so there's a pretty wide window where you'll start to see the reviews come in it's not necessarily all going to flip on within a week so you think it takes like 30 days or something 30 to 60 days for, 30 60 for completion days. yeah Man, I want to and be then, a Vine person. How, how do you get that job? I mean, I want the free stuff. So it's this is their incentive for customers to leave product reviews. And what they do is pick the top 1% of customers creating reviews on the platform. Uh, okay, and so you got to be active. Okay. You I got to be very buying. active. Uh, no, no. Because, because I buy a lot, but I don't leave enough reviews. Um, right, right. And I, I was alluding to something earlier, which is something we started playing around with some of our clients is you can essentially orphan parent listings or create sub parent listings with your product enroll it in the vine program and then once you get those reviews you can merge them back together to really bolster your review count um, this isn't necessarily gray hat in the slightest as um, you're giving out the product you're following amazon's terms of services uh, but what you're now doing is leveraging those 30 reviews for each of the product to then remerge and create a very strong listing with many reviews associated to it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Or I guess it could go the other way too, uh, where you get one that gets the reviews and you merge it together with the rest of the family and it helps the family out, or they all have reviews and you bring it together. So that's brilliant. I love it. Um, we're doing that. That's great. You're, you're you're a genius, Nick. I love it. The, the so, only only thing you got to keep in mind is you're giving the product out. So depending on the the ASP or your cogs, it's it can be very costly. Yeah, I imagine for like um, you know fingernail polish, it's not so bad. But if it's a outdoor television, um, it could be expensive. So I, I guess you got to figure that out. It's, it, but I think ultimately, if you could be on Amazon, the reviews are worth it. It's it's not such a simple easy task to go pure organic you gotta do something you know from social media great advertising but the vine program is a great kickstart so i i definitely would vote for it i don't think it's that expensive even if you have to pay for the product because it beats this five thousand you were talking about i, I mean that's ridiculous. yeah and also you're going to be saving a lot of money in the long run by having those reviews in terms of marketing when you're marketing a listing with zero to five reviews you're conversion is going to be pretty poor and by getting it over that 10 review mark you're creating a lot of legitimacy a lot of trust in the listing and then from there you're going to see your ppc really convert at a much stronger a cost wow so 
I would again, you know, I think everything is it has a little bit of a risk, like the one or two star review that you might get from one of these reviewers. But I think for the most part, if you have a, a, a good product, um, you know, and, it, and and you're representing it properly on the platform, then you should do fine. So I, I'm a big proponent of the Vine program. And you know, one one thing that's got me thinking beyond my keeping it in stock and my reviews is, you know, what's going on with Amazon? You know, I keep on thinking, how do they shed so many people? They they, they laid off so many people and, and so many companies have. So it's not just a pick on Amazon and Microsoft and Google and every tech company on the planet has been doing it. It's like the, the cool thing to do now. But, you know, how, how do they function? How, does it affect them when they cut off so many people? Is this going to affect their ability to receive and ship and all that? I mean, what do you think about these layoffs that we keep on hearing about? So a lot of the layoffs that happen within this year is more the the corporate side. Um, I think there's always been conversation about the warehouses, and we've seen a lot of rotation between all of their DCs with um, uh, warehouse employees. And we saw something that we never thought we would see in this last round of layoffs, which was Amazon laying a lot of individuals off that was working on the AWS team. Um, this is really their their bread and butter of a program. And this is where they make their money. And for them to be cutting through this program, um, it's alarming. We don't necessarily know all of the rationale why, uh, but it seems like Amazon's really trying to figure out how to do more with less. Well, hope they don't do more without the shippers because we need them and the receivers. If it's, uh, but I do think if it's middle management, like like vendor managers, it's definitely going to make it more difficult for the brand. So I think you know that goes back to the AVN, where you're going to get a lot of green beans, um, lower cost people that are managing your brand for Amazon. Um, I, I think it only makes it more difficult because I think the folks that are seasoned understand the the give and take on negotiations. But I think the, a lot of the newer folks need to make fo- follow the rules. And they're not going to stray from the rules and they want to grow. So, you know, I, I, I prefer to get somebody that's a bit more experienced. I, it's not like you get a fool, the new guy. No, no. And, and, you get and you're not going to be able to. Right. So it, it definitely can be frustrating. So fear not on. Well, I guess if AWS is whacking a bunch of people, I mean, I'm hoping they're not the guys that are keeping the, the, the servers going and um the lights on so i'm hoping that um there the platform is robust as possible i mean this is pure speculation so i hope that's not the aws people are getting rid of but um i i do hope that they 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 have a a full army of people ready to ship and receive and process properly um as we get into prime day and holiday and and i see prime day is like the march up you know that starts getting you in in your holiday mode so um you, you know you get ready for this prime day I hope there's not a Prime Day too. I don't know if you heard anything about that. Is there a Prime Day too? Uh, I haven't heard a word about it yet. Oh man, I hope not. And then, um, then you get into your, you know, your your build up for the holiday, you know, which is always a lot of laughs, um, a lot of action, and um, you know, it's where you make a break in many cases. So, um, you know, pretty cool. So I shouldn't worry. I'm not going to worry about these layoffs anymore. I keep on thinking about it. So. To, to kind of like, you know, just recap a little bit, AVN, I give it a thumbs down because I think it's a little troubling for the brands. I think they're squeezing the brands. Brands are going to have to find alternatives um, than, instead of just selling to Amazon, but they need to stay on the platform. They need to get partners, companies like ours um, to help them navigate Amazon. So I think it, for brands, you know, I, I think you've probably gone through a lot of this already and you know what we're talking about. We're here for you. So if you want, come talk to us. I think the NARF program, thumbs up. I mean, I, I think, you know, it'd be crazy not to try it and do it. If you have products up at Amazon, make them available, um, you know, in Canada and Mexico and hopefully soon Brazil and Argentina. I think that's awesome. And that to me is just incremental. Um, the the pain to get my stuff received faster I'm, i don't know i give it like somewhere in between i hate that um because what happens to the guys that don't pay and is it really gonna help um i think try and ship your stuff up there sooner um and if you can't 
and you're really worried about it, I, I, then maybe it's worth paying for the insurance. I, I don't know. It just it really drives me nuts that that's the case. For the Vine program, I, I give that a thumbs up. I mean, I think that's a, a winning program, and you need to do something to build your reviews on your products. It's a must. It's not a maybe. It's not a maybe over time we'll build it. You got to try to jumpstart it, or you're not going to get anywhere fast. And so I give that, you know, try that program. And for these layoffs, like I'm just a worry wart in general. I, I hate people having to get laid off, and um, I just hope it doesn't affect their biz. So to me, that's like I have no real opinion other than just ship the stuff and receive the stuff and um, have some good people internally that people could deal with. That's all I ask. You know, Nikolai, any other thoughts on some of this stuff that we always moan about with each other? No, I, I think you said everything that we've been expressing over the last couple of months. Um, I mean, just rule of thumb, Prime Day's coming up. Make sure you have your stock there. Make sure your advertising set. And it should be very successful for a lot of us. And so, you know, that's we're going to wrap it up for today. We've gone on long, and we really appreciate the people that are live today. This will be archived, of course. But for those that are live and taking time to watch us today, we, we really super really appreciate it. If you have questions, you know, send them in and, you know, or, or give us a call or reach out to us at phelpsunited.com. Uh, that's P-H-E-L-P-S, united.com. Um, and I'm Adam Schaefer. And Nikolai Tomlin. And we're here to help. So um, we love to talk about Amazon, whether you want to work with us or just talk about and brainstorming about Amazon. And we're here to help. So we love the stuff. We're passionate about it. And stay in touch. We got a lot of other cool stuff that we want to talk about. And we'll uh, bring it up next, next session. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.